introduce myself. All right, so first up, right, I want to tell you guys a little story. Um, put a one in the chat if you remember my retreat I went on at the start of the year. If you weren't in Trade House, then you won't, but <laughs> I'm going to tell you about it anyway. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up is I'm just noticing a, a little bit of a theme every now and then in the community, and I want to nip it in the butt. I want to nip it in the butt. So one thing at this retreat, right, um, with one of my mentors, she, um, her father, her family is actually color. Where is Dish's family from? Put it in the chat, you bloody Serbians. <laughs> somewhere we're like over your way Serbia okay yeah over your way rock basically um yeah okay so nuts like her father is like a fucking warlord right hard ass proper just the whole family is a savages okay so we were, we're on this retreat and it was just all business owners and we're here to level up the standards are fucking impeccably high like there's a lot expected of you when you hang around this group of girls, Carla included, right? And there was ice baths, fucking army drills, like you name it, we did it. It was savage. And anyway, it was one really early morning and we went out to the pool. The pool was like one or two degrees. I don't know what it was. And we had just finished doing a whole heap of army drills and Dij was somewhere, I don't know, I, heard, I think she was in her room and she was coming out, but the girls were down one end of the pool and they were fucking bitching and whining and Dij tells this story all the time. So, and Carla's probably heard it before. So there's social proof here. Um, the girls were like bitching and whining about not wanting to get into the ice bath, right? And the, the, they were bonding over complaining. The whole thing around yeah, fuck, this is going to suck. Oh my God, it's going to be so fucking cold. I really don't want to do it. And I distanced myself, right? I literally went to the other end of the pool and Jish and Sarah walk out and she's like, what are you doing down here? And I'm just like, I just had to step away. But before I did that, I looked at the girls and I turned to them and I'm like, you all need to shut the fuck up. And they were literally speechless. Like they looked at me, they're just like, oh, fuck. And then Diz was just like, walk straight past me. And she's like, mm hmm So the reason I'm sharing that with you guys is sometimes in, in communities, in groups of people, right, people can literally bond over complaining, right? And I, I don't want that to ever be you guys. And what I'm seeing a little bit of is a bit of this sucks, this is frustrating. Yeah, we're going to jump ship because these guys are annoying, right? And, and it's just, it's. I understand that it's normal to complain, right? It's normal. But if you guys want to step up and step into greatness, you've got to cut the shit of what's actually normal and do what's expected of you in terms of just not complaining, all right? Um, I'm not bringing this to you in terms of like an attack. I'm just bringing it to you in when we complain, complaining gives the excuse that you can't do something, that something's annoying, whatever else. You can't trade New York session, trade London, trade fucking Asia, trade Aussie, right? If you want to get things done, then complaining is never going to help you, right? It just makes things really difficult for you to achieve. So if you have the habit of complaining about everything, you'll find a reason to complain about everything. You're not going to take responsibility. You're going to bond over what's annoying, right? The whole me too thing. It's always something else's fault that you can never do something. You can never do wrong, right? This is not how you should lead your life. And this is not how you should want to lead your life. Right. So Jenna and I were, were talking this afternoon about literally the hero's journey of a trader. And today, Rock, I wanted to ask you before we, I don't even know what we're doing tonight. We've got a bit of an idea, <laughs> but I thought we'd put it to the people because we've actually got Rock twice before the end of the year. So one can be a charting call. One can be a bit of an interview. It can be both. It can be honestly, whatever we want. Rock's going to yeah. be doing a lot more work with us in the coming months. And he's also one of our guests on the Bali retreat, which is fucking dope. So get your ass to Bali retreat. Now, 
if you don't know Rock, Rock is one of Trade House's best mentors, right? He's got Trade House Europe. He is uh, one of the top educators. I'm going to say, what, is, what are you in, like top five? Yeah, we're we're pretty much all top five. But now Ify and So are about to clinch on top 10. So awesome. we're smashing the numbers. Trade House just leads the way in trading education in fucking everything. Um, so yeah, it's it's really amazing that Rock wants to be a part of the Trade House Oz mission because Trade House is Trade House. Doesn't matter where we are, we all have the the one mission, and that is just making beast fucking traders. And Rock is someone that a lot of you have learned from in the in the last couple of years. He's also someone he's been a mentor to me as well, right? So whatever it whatever is required for you guys to to get the success you want, we're going to give it to you. Right. So Rock, the first question I want to ask you is I, I want to, before we like, maybe we can do charts, maybe we can do whatever. But the first question I want to know specifically is on your come up from, maybe you can just share a little bit about your journey of trading and the things you had to sacrifice for you to get to where you are. Let's start there. Okay, cool. So if we go back on the days when when I was in high school, of course, everybody was essentially like kind of like semi daydreaming, of course, what they want to become in their life, right? And for me, it was always that kind of like traveling lifestyle, of course, being having a financial freedom, time freedom, um, you know, place freedom, essentially. Um, and one of the biggest thing is I understand that I could not fit in in that let's say situations where i will have nine to five for like 40 to 45 years and then retire and all that that that's definitely the route that i didn't want it to go so i guess i kind of was already different in that way that i was having enough courage to look over the boundaries of what let's say a normal teenager boy in slovenia should essentially follow right now, when Forex was introduced to me, of course, it was like love on the first side, you know, and of course it was rough, like I lost accounts, blown accounts, because I didn't know what I was doing and all that. But I was always in kind of like a mindset that I just need to stick with it. You know, a lot of times life is going to throw at you a different shiny object to kind of like test you whether you want to jump to another boat and you know, try to another journey. But for some reason, I knew deep in myself and I was, whenever that shiny object came to in front of me, that voice in my head got louder saying like, no, 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 stay with one thing, be loyal to one thing and you will see the journey where where, where that is going to take you, right? And that's how I, come, I came across Zach back in 2014. He started to teach me you know, what PIP is, what trend line is and all that. And then through Zach, got know how to do, how, you know, Jordan, Mike Miles, Vargas and all those guys. And that's essentially, you know, how I was introducing the trade house. Now, when we go, let's say a little bit into my journey. Um, and one of the things that I say to a lot of people is like, okay, in the beginning, of course, everybody start to trade because we essentially want to make money. Bottom part is of course we want to be profitable we want to make money we want to make a better living and all that which is good which is awesome now one of the biggest thing that i did not realize is that the next step is of course quit nine to five and here was probably the biggest sacrifice which was not really a sacrifice but it was kind of like a big wake-up call for me is that nobody was telling me of course what happens after you are in a position to quit nine to five? What mm -hmm. then? Because a, a lot of people or a lot of mentors are leading you towards kind of like that edge and then give you enough courage for you to jump. But then you don't even know how to land, how to swim, essentially, whatever is below that edge. Why I'm saying this is because when I quit nine to five, you know, nine to five is giving you the routine throughout the day because like you wake up, get breakfast or whatever you do as a morning routine, go to nine to five, finish one nine to five, come home, deal with your partner, kids, family, and then try to do for an hour, two hour with, you know, something business wise and then go to sleep and repeat. Right now, imagine all of a sudden 
you don't have that routine anymore. It's like you don't have that nine to five. You don't have a requirement to wake up 6 a.m., 7 a.m. in the morning to start your morning routine. You can sleep in. And that was one of the biggest problems is like because when you start to be your own boss, a lot of people are not capable of being their own boss. Because it's easy to go to nine to five and be there in the office and wait for somebody to give you a job, to give you something to work, to give you, I don't know, some paper to finish or whatever. And then you just have to finish it in that eight hour, right? And it's kind of redundant when you work for somebody else and then you can just collect the paycheck. But then again, a lot of people are not capable of being their own bosses and kick themselves in the butt, work for themselves. And then instead of having nine to five, now you have 24 seven because working for yourself is pretty much 24 seven job. It is more fulfilling. It is more rewarding and all that, but it requires way more discipline and way more self-awareness. And for me, that was one of the biggest struggles that nobody was telling me it's going to happen one, once you ditch that nine to five mentality, ditch that nine to five routine. Now, all of a sudden you have to figure out your own routine, right? Which again, it doesn't have anything to do with, you know, charts or anything like that, but it has such a big influence throughout the life and throughout your success. And, um, it took me like a almost nine months to realize that, yeah, okay, I have money coming in. I am, let's say, self-sufficient when it comes financially. I live a little bit better than uh, what was do- what I was doing back in nine to five. But the way I was living was definitely not the way I wanted to, right? So I had to then put myself in a position to make morning routine, wake up 6 a.m. no matter what, even though if I'm not, let's say, nine to five anymore i'm in the gym 6 a.m training and all that so it took it took me like nine months to really realize like oh a big part of routine went by now i have to develop my own routine now i am my own boss and you really have to realize that you know it's a it's a it's an effort it is a big effort because you have to be disciplined there is no more luxury of course of being um, uh, in the environment or in the room and say like, oh yeah, because of the boss, I have this salary. Oh, I have such a stupid boss because he's like doing all this work for me. Da, 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 da. Right now, you're you just have to see yourself in the mirror because now you are your own boss, right? And that's one of the biggest thing that a lot of people are really not capable of doing, right? So I'm just trying to give you guys that in advance to start thinking about it, like who you will be for yourself as a boss to really give yourself that routine, right? And I, I think that was one of the biggest um, thing in my trading career that nobody's talking about it. Yeah. You know what? I completely right. hear you here. Like when I, I first quit my job, right? It was September, 2016. I'd quit my retail job and <laughs> I remember like literally what Matt just said, trying to get yourself into a routine. You fall into the mindset of I'll do it later. I'll do it tomorrow. The next minute, two weeks is gone. Nothing's done. What helped me step into the identity? Um, Because it is, it's an identity, right? You, you're told your whole life what to do from like, go and watch last week's recording guys about the whole conversation around uh, discipline and self-discipline. Very big difference, right? Discipline, just to recap, that is like, at a job, you know what to do, when to do it, how to do it, right? But when your self-discipline is actually about doing the right thing when no one is watching, right? That's that whole conversation. What I had to do as a routine is I literally had to get in my car, like get dressed, have my breakfast, do all the things, get in my car, drive around the block, come back and pull up into my driveway as if I was literally (laughs) driving to work, (laughs) That was the thing that was like a a brief, like a little mental shift that I had to do. But anyway, guys, pop it in the chat. What do you want? I'm going to give it to the people. What do you want from Rock tonight? Do you want a beginner's trade call? Or do you want some more psych? Or we want to do just a QA. and a Yeah, or a QA. and a Give it to us. the first one. Yeah. 
I've got a gazillion questions I could actually ask Rock. So if you're happy for mm. me to just like rattle off a couple of things, I would. Love yeah, it. sure. We can go for next one and people can then just drop it in the chat. Beginner's trade goal. Okay. Well, how about this, Isabella? If you have specific questions regarding um, a trade call, like a, a charting situation, then bring that to the question box. Right. So you guys go ham in the chat. If you have something you would like to ask, then please do so. Anyone have anything straight off the bat? Anything straight off the bat? I'm going to give you psych. All right. Psych wins. Standard. <laughs> all right. We're all, so, we're all such kind of like a big psychos. <laughs> bunch of big psychos <laughs> <laughs> all right my first question to you then is what was your biggest challenge aside from what you just experienced then you that was your transition into trading full-time but put yourself back in when you first started learning right so you're like a noob what was your biggest challenge you faced when you started trading and how did you overcome it um i was so thirsty for that quick money and to get that fancy lifestyle that i was just literally running full sprint through with my head first through the walls right what i mean by that is like you know when i first kind of got into the trading and when zach really started to open my eyes when it comes to what this industry can really do for you and how much potential you have you know then all of a sudden you just wanted to soak it in all at once right you already want to be that overnight success story and you already want to be having six seven figures in your bank accounts and all that and because of that i was not let's say essentially be patient enough to figure out like who I am as a trader. Like I, more I was introduced into the smart money, more I saw a quick fix for that thirst or for that lust to get money fast in the smaller time frames, And that was essentially the wrong way to go because instead of, let's say, peacefully develop, um, kind of like a trading plan and having the basics down and so on and so forth, right? I went into like a really complex lower time frame when you really need to be sharp with, you know, decision-making process and being disciplined and all that, having trading plan on the lock and all that. I didn't have that, right? And because of that, I was just trying to make it stick. And more it was kind of like going along, like on the opposite direction that I wanted to, more I was just jumping in, hoping that that is the one, right? Trying to catch that uh, Hill Mary, right? And that's one of the biggest uh, problem that I faced at the beginning, knowing that there is literally no cap as in a potential and the only cap is yourself. But I didn't saw that because I was so, let's say, pushed through that lust of making a fast money that I completely lost myself let's say uh in in that journey of like trying to catch the big payout with one trade right that was one of the biggest problem and then one of the biggest breakthrough that i had is when i realized finally um uh, in the in the process of like trying to compete with social media traders of who can flip account with one trade and all that when i real realized that people don't even care like the only thing, the only person that cares of who you are as a trader is yourself and how much money you make is yourself. You know, other people are opinions or other people trades or that title of being the guy on social media, whatever, essentially doesn't pay your bills, right? So I really went back to the whiteboard and started to figure out, okay, what is the risk to rewards that I'm comfortable with trading? And completely ditched the idea of trying to catch those 1 to 50s and 1 to 20s and all that, which is good. It's awesome, right? If you are somebody like that, go for it, right? I don't say uh, that it's like impulsive or anything. I just say that you really need to discover who you are inside of the charts. 
all we're doing over here as a mentors like SJ, Jenna, me, Siva, Mike, we're trying to show you different paths, different informations, different breakthroughs, different realizations that we had in our journey. But at the end of the day, you have to be you behind the charts. For some of you guys, it's easier for trade for our in daily time frame. So be it. Own it. For some of you guys, it's easy to go 15 seconds. So be it. Own it, right? Because we are so different. Somebody has the capability of being scalper. Somebody has the capability of being swing traders. Just because he has patience. Just because he has lifestyle uh, developed that way. And it's totally fine. And you need to be so comfortable by owning that who you are in the chart that you just don't care what other people are doing, mm. right? Because your journey, your results is your, you know, it's yours. It's not somebody else's. You can help somebody else's with advices, but it doesn't mean that you're going to be essentially start to like make money just because somebody, you know, on the other side of the world is like trading. It's not going to happen that way, right? So when I really had that deep realization that it doesn't matter, right, to be, chasing the title of being the best educator in the platform or chasing to be in a ba the best trader on the social media or flipping accounts constantly with one trade and all that, I saw that it was a race with no meaning. It was completely opposite of who I, were, who I really was and who I really want to become behind the charts, right? And then when I saw that this is like completely pointless, I really had to step down and really ask myself, like, what do I really want? Like, who do I really want to become? Um, and that's where I really had one of the biggest breakthroughs, especially when it comes to the risk reward. That's the idea of 13125 was born. I saw a lot of people then start to developing and kind of like borrowing that. Uh, not, that not that I'm claiming that 13125, but I saw a big potential in that and it helped me really start to solidify the profit in a consistent manner. And I think that that's one of the biggest thing to really uh, focus on and realize is that it's your own journey. There is a millions way to make a million dollars. And mm -hmm. each of those ways has a different ups and downs, right? And, and kind of like the end result might be the same. And some pathways are going to take longer for somebody is going to be sooner. Doesn't matter, right? It's just... One of the biggest thing is like comparison is stealing the joy. And if you're really going to be starting to compare yourself, it's okay, of course, if you start to like compare with somebody that is a friend and all that, but don't let that comparison really break your character to the point that you're going to be completely unmotivated to continue to move on just because a person that maybe start a few months after you has a better result than you. Um, yeah, I fucking love that. Right chat's going off something I want to bring up relatively quickly like now <laughs> uh one of the girls and I'm going to nip you in the butt again Isabella you're not even a month in <laughs> all right so Rock my question for you on behalf of Isabella who is a very smart woman mind you she's suffering a bit of imposter syndrome She's reading the Discord. She's going through the education, not quite finished. And she's reading all the charts, reading everyone's conversations and getting overwhelmed and thinking, I don't know anything. Should I be here? Um, whatever else. So what is your advice for Isabella for that? Um, that happened to me too. And I recently heard such a big advice um on one of the reels he says like if i ask you one plus one plus one plus one equals four right you're going to calculate that pretty much in your mind but if i ask you what's like 4037 plus 172.5 you will probably need to write it down to calculate it correctly right so we feel that whatever is happening in our life we can just solve in our mind without do anything on a piece of paper or to do notes, right? Because think about it. Do you really think that your life is that simple as one plus one plus one plus one equals four that you can just calculate it or that you can just solve it in your in, in your brain? No, you need to write it down. You need to see in the physical form. Now, the reason why I'm saying that 
is because when we start to learn new things, right? And we're eager to um, learn new information. Of course, we're going to come to the community that has few months, few years of the experience. And of course, if you read that conversation with those people, it's going to be like completely mind-blowing in positive or negative way, right? You just have to understand, even for me, right? When I started like in 2014 and when somebody was starting to talk about it, it's like uh, trading futures and trust funds and yields and T-notes. And I was like, what the hell are they talking about? Like, I don't, it's like so many fancy words so many stuff that's like doesn't make any sense it's because it's just it's levels to this right so first we need to learn how what the pip is we need to learn what a trend line is equal highs candlesticks structure then forex commodities futures whatever it is it's step by step right because like isabella you're thinking like this right you're just walk into a skyscraper and you're down there in the level one and you're hearing in the elevator people from penthouse having a conversation and now you're like i don't even want to be in this building yet you decided to walk into and you now you're in the elevator right so just go level by level and you're gonna see i bet that in the a month or two months being in here in this community you're gonna know everything what they're talking about right now of course your brain does see that as a complex thing because it's a completely new environment. It's a completely new skill set. It's a completely new information. But instead of that being demotivating, let it be motivating. Because like, think about it. Your brain does not have the cap on how much it can soak in. We literally have unlimited kind of like a memory space. Why don't we sum up that information that might be helpful in the future and have it in our brain? Let that be you know, motivational to see all those people having those fancy words and fancy conversations and be all that smart ass, you know, in the, in the, in the discord, right. You're going to be there like four months in, I'm pretty sure. And there's going to be another Isabella coming into the discord. that's going to have exactly the same situation. You're going to be like, no, 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 just stay in, soak it in. You're going to see that it's going to all make sense. I'll help you. And go from there right let that be motivational for you how do you feel about that isabella i've screenshotted your bit where you said i'm not fucking leaving <laughs> not fucking leaving <laughs> show must go on i think the other really important thing to remember is like if you look at rock jenna myself mike shane you know johnny we're fluent in it right we're only, but we were once beginners and everyone was once a beginner. Everyone ha once had a day one and everyone's day one was like exactly that was literally what the fuck I got myself into. We all had the thoughts of, am I ever going to get this? How long is this going to take? We've all had them. Um, so I really don't think a beginner's problems are special or unique because we've all had them, um, which I also think is a really humbling thing right? If, if problems aren't unique to you, that means everyone else has had them, which means if they've overcome it, you can also overcome it, right? If I can do it, you can do it. If Rock can do it, you can do it. We're not better traders than you. We've just been doing it a hell of a lot longer. We've just got more experience, right? There is probably 10 traders on here that will become a far better trader than what I am. But how will you know if you don't stick this out? You're not. Right. And I think a really important thing to remember with this as well is trading is just one of those things where if not this, then what? Exactly. Truly. You can have a business. Business is cool. Whatever. You still got to fucking talk to people. You still got to sell shit. Sometimes I fucking hate people and I don't want to do that. <laughs> Let's be honest. I don't want to show up on Instagram every day and fucking sell something. Right. I don't want to do it. Trading, I can sit in my little fucking dingy den right here, not talk to a single soul and make fucking bank, right? I can go visit Rock in Spain, sit on a fucking beach drinking a margarita, probably shouldn't drink and trade at the same time, but I'll make an exception for that one experience of being on a beach in Spain with Rock trading, right? 
this, if you stick this out, I swear to fucking God, the opportunities that will come to you and be open to you and just be just the shit you learn that's not even trading related will rock your damn world. Will rock your damn world. Now, let me scroll back to the questions. All right. We've got one from Matt. I love trading to start and then had a string of losses recently and felt down about it. I've had a few wins recently to get me back into profit, feeling good again. How do I become more level-headed through the journey? That's a good question. Um, For me, one of the biggest thing was, I mean, I kind of like relooping over here is doing the notes, right? Especially what one of the biggest thing that I did in my journey to give you like a really good example, I was printing out all the back testing charts. Now, the reason why I was doing that is because when I did that, I put them in the binder, I laminated them so I can literally like take a a pen and then do it, you know, red, green, whatever the colors I had. Because once you level up when it comes to the skill set of going through the charts and analyzing the, the markets and all that, when you go through the binder, there is always going to be more things that you're going to see in the, exactly the same set, setup that you're going to have in the binders. And that's going to be a good, good way for you to remind yourself of the basics, see your process of how you're leveling up, essentially. See yourself how you're going to have like a visual example and proof that you're leveling up just because you saw something three months ago on that chart. Now you see a completely more things in that chart just by sticking in the game. And of course, learn through the video calls and academies and all that. And you have that experience and all that. And you're going to be like, oh yeah, this trade happens because this happened, this happened, this happened. And I didn't saw that three months ago. Now I know that because of this happened and this was going on that it, you know what I mean? So Every single time I go through my binders, I see where I was like a year ago or where I was like five years ago. And I'm like, well, man, I was like so white, <laughs> figuratively <laughs> speaking. <laughs> right. And I think that um, that's one of the biggest thing that a lot of times we completely lose ourselves thinking like, oh, nothing, nothing is working anymore. I'm like in, in kind of consolidation in my life or in the learning process uh, process and then you're like i don't know where to go and if you just look back you think you, you're really gonna realize how far you come it's like for me i did have kind of like uh like a small pep talk with myself the other day it was like you know i was complaining that it's hard that i might not be in the life where i should already be blah blah blah, blah. and then i was like just sitting on the beach and looking back in my life is like bro you're literally 10 years in the game you're literally living three times amount of dreams that you were dreaming in high school you're doing one hour per work per day if you if we put it that way being an educator over here and i'm still complaining that it's hard it's like there are probably 99.9 percent .9 of people right now that i would that it would take you literally your position in a heartbeat as a blessing and you're over here complaining that it's hard and all that. I was like, all right, done, ready to work. Right. And think that's one of the biggest thing that a lot of times, you know, we feel that we're stuck in some position because we are, I guess have to stop for a little bit and look back and see how far we really come. Even if you're, let's say four months in the, in the journey, think about it. You just have four months worth of experience and information more that you had in the end of in the beginning of the year right and imagine how the 2024 is going to be for you moving forward it's going to be just 10x of that right so i think that like i said throughout the journey just try to write down or make a physical notes whatever you're going to learn because a lot of times if you go back and just scroll through your notes and through your stuff you're really going to be kind of like see where it came from and kind of like remind ourselves because like sometimes what happened to me though i might be the only one but a lot of times we start to like really over complicating the charts and then because of that buzz and over complicating we just don't see opportunities anymore 
And if I just go through my binder or through the notes that I have, remind myself of a completely basic stuff, break structure, imbalance, candlesticks, London Open, New York Open, da da da. It's like, like a refresher. And then all of a sudden charts become completely clear. But because I had that buzz of like seasonality, the volume imbalance, and all those voices in my head, it was a completely like nightmare in the chart. And that's why, again, like I said, I'm relooping to the to the to that reel that I was sawing. It's like, you know, we kind of like try to hold everything in our mind and in our head instead of doing doing everything on a piece of paper. Because a lot of time, guys, if you feel like in, in being in anxiety or in depression or like really being anxious and all that, just write down on a piece of paper. That helps to me so much. What can you control right now and what is out of your control? And you're going to see that we are focusing on 95% of the things that we cannot even control. And we put so much energy onto that that is keeping us in negative emotions into like depression, anxiety, and so much, so which is completely out of our realm of even controlling instead of focusing on what we can control right now. How do I feel? I can do meditation. I can go do workout. Maybe I can just go outside on the walk, barefoot to ground a little bit or put myself into, I don't know, music, jam some, I don't know, Linkin Park, whatever works for you. You know what I mean? So it's like, that's that's a lot of times when we really just start to kind of like need to slow down a bit. Hmm. Right? Yeah. Um, Nat in the chat, sometimes I get overwhelmed when I think about how far I have actually come and what I have achieved since I've started to learn to trade. I've never had this level of growth in my life. Just on that, guys, I want to share and in, in extension to uh, what Rock's saying is like, what I want you to do, I gave this task to one of my oldest friends who's in Trade House. Um, I'm going to like not mention any names because they, <laughs> I respect privacy, but I do have permission to share um, what she wrote to me. Okay. What I want you guys to do when you get off this call tonight is I want you to write yourself a fig jam folder, right? Fig jam stands for what? Fuck, I'm good. Just ask me right? That's what it stands for. And when you have moments of like, what the fuck am I doing? Am, am I weighing over my head? I want you to go and read that fucking fig jam folder, right? I don't care if it's screenshots from people. I don't care if it's just achievements you've done, right? I'm going to, in the past, I'm going to read this message, looking at the name. In the past two to three years, I quit a 17-year smoking habit. I quit a 16-year drug addiction. I fixed all my teeth. I became fully debt-free. I changed careers and now earn over 100K. I moved out, got my own place. I started saving for a house, got my bike, lo got my bike license and bought the sexiest bike on the planet. I've been learning to trade. I've opened myself up to therapy. I've learned more about myself and what I could and what I want in my life than I ever could have possibly imagined. All the courses, this made me cry. I've now I have such a perspective on how far I've come. Right? Two to three years, that much has shifted from the growth of doing the work that this industry can bring you. None of that is even financially from trading yet. That is fucking huge. So with that then, Rock, my next question to you then would be, beyond financial gain, how do you measure success in trading and, and what other factors contribute to your sense of achievement in trading? Um, When it comes to like success or let's say as a result, I have kind of like two things that pop into my head right now. One of being is a lot of times people ask me, okay, show me your results. And I'll say, you know what? Instead of me showing you my numbers, look around how many people I brought to the realization of what trading really is and how much they can potentially make. You know, and when I see you guys make a withdrawal or when I see you guys make a fund and accounts and all that, that's my result, right? That's my withdrawal per se, right? The second thing is being in a financial position right now where 
you know, I'm so grateful that I'm here where I am that, for example, my parents just re let's say redo their houses. Right. And I just went into the store and bought the best home appliances. Didn't even ask. Right. Mm -hmm. And they didn't even budge what type of the price that was. It's like, okay, mom, you want this? Yes. You want this fridge? Yes. You wanted this washing machine? Yes. Bam. Just, you know, no matter the price. So that, that's one of the biggest, I'll, I'll kind of say like egoistically flex that, <laughs> uh, that I have and being in a position that I can give back to my family, being around me and supporting me when it was hard, when, when you were like, when I was in a position like, should I even go forward with this? Should I quit? When, you know, big in I am people were starting like backstabbing you or, you know, it just burned an account or you lost the funding account or, you know, they're hard. I'm not going to say that we are all kind of like bulletproof for that. We had our fair share of like, let's say gray moment. Um, and it's so amazing to now be in a position to, for example, like here, I'm literally just decided, you know what? I need a little bit different winter. Why not to move to Mallorca? And I'm over here for a, literally a first week here and i love it right and not even budge about how much the the monthly rent is or whatever it doesn't even matter it's like okay now i'm not positioning myself where i'm gonna stay based on how much i'm gonna pay for the place it's about like how i'm gonna feel in that place is that place up to my standard now i'm not i'm not let's say a luxurious person that i need all like gucci things and louvi designer tables whatever no i'm completely simple human being but i have my standards i want to be like in old barely standing building you know what i mean so i think those are results and i we we met a couple uh this week over here in spain with my buddy he's with me um uh, and we were having conversation you know a lot of people saying you know money cannot buy you happiness yeah look i'm over here in spain I'm training for one of the biggest and hardest races that I'm ever going to do in my life in six months. And it's because I can support myself financially that I, that I'm able to go so overboard my comfort zone with all this, getting coaches, nutritionists, uh, getting specific bike, you know, getting training done every single day, you know, and still have time to do business and all that. It's like, that's, the environment that essentially money can give you right and it's not about you know having luxury cars and all that it's like giving this getting this experience right seeing there are many many roads right over here we actually were in like on sunday we were at lighthouse over here which is like a really common and popular thing in mallorca to go for and it was like it's one thing seeing it on YouTube and on a Facebook, people sending the pictures, but when you see it in the real life, it's like literally you feel that like you're in some sort of simulations. You know what I mean? It's like it's and and that's that's what I feel that it essentially money can provide. Because you can't come over here like and then just, you know, I don't know, beg for food, I guess. But that's what I'm saying. It's like life, you I mean, money is definitely buying not buying, it gives you the access to, to get fulfillment. But then again, it's up to you what fulfillment do you want? You want ego fulfillment? I'm not going to say it's not nice to have, of course, a luxury car. It's, of course, it's amazing. That's, that's the reason why they invented them. But when you just buy that to flex, it's... I guess that's how society is measuring the success these days, which is a sad part, right? But it is, we're kind of like living in that, in that society. They just have material possessions as something that we are, let's say, measuring as a almost kind of like dick con contest. You know what I mean? It's like, there is always like a better car. There's always a bigger PJ. There is always a bigger yacht that you have. And then so down there in Dubai, they're literally spending 60 millions because the plate has number one first or number a letter a first and they put like 60 million dollar licensing plate on the card that is worth five million it's like you know there's always level to this so think about it in this material material position thing is like never ending story there is no cap on it 
is always next level. There is always somebody richer than you. There is always somebody that's going to do a bigger thing than you. Mm. And then if you stick, if you stick with that mentality, then you're like in your dad bad thinking, I didn't accomplish anything just because I was racing in the visible race with no destination with somebody that doesn't even care that I'm literally dying right now. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's like when you really start to realize that it's like completely mind blowing that after that, you know, you know what I mean? I want to, I want to be in that bed and I'm like, oh, you know what? I tried everything. I lived my life to fulfill it. I soaked in every single day as much as possible and have as little as, as regret as possible. That's it. Because mm. we don't take Lambos to the upside. We don't take PJs to the to the heavens and all that. Money stays here. Material thing stays here. But memories, that goes with you. Facts. It's funny. My, my dad always said, um, rich is loud, but wealth whispers. Right? And, and mm. my dad is, um, some of you know, like my background and, and his story. And he's one of the wealthiest men I know, 82 um, sorry, 81 and, you know, has built an empire of a, of a business in mining. And what I love about him is like when it comes to money, he drives a base level Navara, right? Just a, a fucking ute. Do you know what a ute is, Rock? A ute. Mm. What was that? I guess it's like, yeah, it's like Mike's truck, but okay. like a utility truck. So ute out here. <laughs> U-T. I got it. Got it, got it. <laughs> um. And yeah, base, base level of that, right? He's got, he doesn't invest in a traditional sense. He invests in um, like boat charters. So he's got heaps of boats up in Airlie and in a charter company and makes fucking squilly. And so if you want a different investment vehicle, highly recommend boating. Anyway, we went out on the boat, right? And my dad will wear like shoes from Rivers, board shorts and a t-shirt and a cap. Drives the most base level you. He comes in. And he's so proud of this new toaster he bought. Like he could go and buy like high-end luxury, whatever he wanted. And he picks up this $7 fucking toaster from Kmart. And he's just like, look at my new toaster. Like so fucking wrapped about his new toaster. And what I what I love about that lesson is, is so true what you were just saying, Mike. Like money, I don't think money can make you happy. It gives you choices, right? Because I remember it was last year I had my highest trading year. And, you know, multi six figures and what I felt when I had it was like completely like, I, I had like, some of you may remember, I went through like a bit of a dark night of the soul moment where I just made the money and then I was like, oh, now what? Mm -hmm. so, you know, it was like, cool. Now what? You know, I'm, I'm mortgage free. I'm, I'm out of debt. Now what? And this is why I say to you guys, like, you may not know what your why is, right? But I still believe your money needs a purpose because it's going to get really boring when you retire and you can do whatever the fuck you want when you want. That's going to get boring very, very quickly, right? You need to find something. What you'll find with trading is you may not be overly passionate about trading. And I think that is okay. I believe you have to have a level of passion to get through the learning journey. Otherwise you won't. But you've got to keep that eye on that long-term vision, that eye on the prize. Because when you do, quote unquote, start making big money with trading, whether that's through funded accounts or personal accounts, whatever, what becomes accessible to you is going to blow your fucking mind. Like we spoke about this half an hour ago, right? You need to have a mission beyond trading as well, because what becomes available to you, you're not going to, I can't explain it because you're not going to know until you experience it. Right. But for most people, and I and and i maybe Rock can answer this as well for himself, trading is very rarely the the be all and end all. Right? It's a sure. gateway into something else. It's 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 gonna fund so many passions for you. It's true. It's like I I also let's say at the beginning, I was also in the mindset like, okay, trading is my only and end game. When it comes to money. But then throughout the process, you discover that it's like. It's it's like trading is kind of like a, a, a water, like a water hose. And then you can water your garden however you want it. And that's where I realized that, OK, when I make a withdrawal, now what? Just like what Ajay said. 
if I if I, if I have that money sitting in my bank account, it's 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 kind of like worthless. Yeah, okay, you have it. You might have like a, like a um, safety net in your in your mind. That's cool. But you should put that money to work for you, right? You should put it in a position that is going to be creating generational wealth, trust funds, you know, real estate management and all that. And then more you're start, starting to think about more like passive incomes is like, how can I put this money in a position that's going to make me an additional 10% a year? You don't need much. 10% there, 10% there, 7% there, 5% there, 15% there. All of a sudden, you're going to see that you just withdraw, I don't know, let's say a million dollars and you invest in different things. And all of a sudden, now you're getting 30 to 40% return on a yearly basis. So I'll ask you this. Can you survive in Australia with $400,000 per year? I think you can survive everywhere. You know what I mean? So like that, and that's what makes then trading instead of a race to the next withdrawal, it all of a sudden becomes a hobby. Hmm. Because you already have financial independence because that investments are giving you money to sustain your lifestyle, whatever lifestyle is going to be, even if you have a luxury house, PJs, cars, whatever. And then you're still trading on top of that. That becomes so enjoyable. Right. And that's where you really start to think, okay, what's my angle here? Like what's what's my checkmate to the financial game? That's where I started to think about real estate, creating a trust fund, researching how to open trust funds and all that. Because again, why do wealthy people have that? Can I, as a rock coomer, have capability to access that information? And you go to another route of exploring and, of course, learning and new things. I'll just give you guys a little bit of a crumbs here. But it's like creating wealth and then wealth protection. That's mm -hmm. the best thing that I can say. Yeah, absolutely. So I would like to know, because quite a common conversation people have also been having in the Discord is when you come into an industry like trading, a group specifically like Trade House, you start learning some very worldly things, conversations just start happening naturally and you're a, or you're a part of conversations that wouldn't necessarily be normal for everyday life, right? So I would like to know, you know, like there's this, there's that saying of, you know, the next chapter of your life is going to require new levels of you, new levels of courage, new levels of confidence, new levels of consistency, there's going to be a whole lot of shit thrown at you, a lot of tests, a lot of distractions, a lot of things that you could maybe use excuses for, right? Anything that could maybe attempt to derail you, influence you, right? So I believe a big reason why people don't succeed is because they are not willing to let themselves outgrow friendships, have, um, you know, outgrow environments that no longer align with who they are who they are now to who they need to succeed. Because something we always say is who you are when you first start trading is not going to be the person that succeeds in trading. And if you are the only one in your friend circle that is learning something like this, shit's going to shift pretty quick. So I want to know, have you experienced, I'm sure you have, what changed for you and your in, 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 in this kind of circumstance um, what environments did you, did you outgrow friends? Did you outgrow, like, what did you do? How did you handle it? And just give these guys a bit of support with this. Um, so in the process of like not trading to become an educator on the platform and also kind of like a leader of trade house in, in Europe, I kind of overgrow three different group of individuals that I was friends with air quotes here friends with over here in slovenia and each of those group were kind of like in a specific timing i guess where you essentially reach their let's say potential when it comes financially how, how much they're earning and who they are in a society blah 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 and then you're leveling up just because of course you're associated with way more successful people just like i was associated a lot with jason jordan Matrosa and all those guys. 
and they were helping me level up so much. So the friends kind of like saw that I already were passing them. Right. And that's where they start to like, you know, talk, not really shit towards you, but more kind of like, you know, oh, you're now too fancy for us. Oh, you're going to America just because this and this and this. Oh, so now you're, ha- you're more trusting the Americans than Australians, blah, blah, blah. That could be, you know, the, the situation that you can be in. But at the end of the day, if those people do not support you, um, they, they should not be around you. I'll say this, right? And this is what uh, one of the good uh, things that I learned as well recently, not really recently, but like a few years back and it's definitely a motto for me so for example if my friend starts a business and you need a service from that business a lot of us we think oh you know i know sj she's running this company she's providing this service i'll definitely get a better discount if i go to her for me, it's like, no, I will call SJ because I know that SJ is going to come to me and making an extra effort that service is going to be like A plus and I will pay the full price plus some because that's how you support the business of a friend, right? And if you don't have a friend that's around you that work that way, I will never want it to be around those people. And even, for example, I was in Germany this year and there was a leader that they were selling like a really badass uh, hoodies. And I said, I want one. And he's like, yeah, we're selling it for 60 euros. But I'll give you for 40 euros, right? I said, no, here's 100. And he's like, why? I was like, no, look, I'm here to support you and your team. And I know that it's already coming off of your packet, uh, pocket and you did a really good job. It's a high quality. I love it. I love what you do over here. Here is me supporting you. Uh, And it's a different environment, right? So the reason why I'm doing that is, again, it's because how would you feel if somebody would do that for you? Right? You would be on another level. So that's why I'm saying that when it comes to the friends, like, rarely, you're going to find them. They are rare that are your right and die. And it's easier to find those ride or dies in kind of like a business ventures, just like communities like this, because this community could be the filter through the society that is out there and having people over here that already went through the filter of like, you know what? I want to make more from my life. I want to be in a different mental state. I want to be a different person or I am a different person than somebody out there, right? And, you know, maybe you find Johnny or SJ or whoever over here as your right and die, just because you can have the most craziest idea out there, but they will support you and they will like, oh, I know a friend that might help you. Or I know a friend that might give you a few, few tips of how to do this crazy idea. That's the network of people that are here no matter how crazy your idea really is, right? And sometimes you just have to go through the group of people, a group of individuals, and you're going to see that you're going to overgrow them. And at the end of the day, think about it. Because your potential is developing, and of course, when you start to realize who you really are and how much potential you are, if you're in the wrong environment, it's going to be draining for you. And that can become so tremendously a wrecking ball for you because it can drain you from motivation of even can you know starting to do business or starting to really go heavy into the trading and all that and you might be having a rough patch and because you are in the wrong environment with the wrong people they can drain you to the position you're just gonna say you know what no and go back to a normal life you know going to nine to five and then few years after that you're going to be like damn i just waste five ten years living like this which is shitty and i could do so much more if i would just stick it through that rough patch but i trust that person that is now nowhere near around now and now we have to go have to go back to the square one and do it again you know what i mean it's just like think about it it's like your journey your life Nobody 
see it from your own eyes, right? And you have a different shoes than somebody else and you're walking your path. And there's going to be people around you that are going to support you. You're going to be in situations that you just, quote unquote, laugh the old group of people and you still did not find a new group of people. So you're kind of like in a limbo mode or kind of like in between environment. And Alex Hermos is talking about this. He's like, that's when you are in a position where you're leveling up because you're kind of like lonely, like a lone wolf out there figuring out what's the next pack, where is the next pack that you're going to go? You know what I mean? So that's one of the biggest thing, right? Um, so I, I think that's one of the biggest um, advice that I can give you and also kind of like give you guys a path that I went through. Um, that looking back right now, it's like making so much sense. Mm. It's funny, like I've never met Rock in my life, yet we've been great friends for years. Exactly. We get on Zoom and we just talk shit for like an hour sometimes, <laughs> right? Like yeah. I met Jenna, she found me on YouTube or Facebook, messaged me and was like, hey, I want what you have, teach me. I'm like, okay, who the fuck are you? Let's do it right? I met her online. She's now one of my best friends. She now runs this business with me, right? Trade house. Um, we did everything we did together for eight and a half years, right? I met, never met Mark yet. I've been with him on every single Tuesday since 2017. Jacinta, who you see in the chat, met her through trading. She was one of my bridesmaids, right? Michelle, you don't know her. She's one of our best crypto traders, um, US 30 traders. Hopefully I'm trying to get her to like come in as a US 30 educator because she's fucking bomb. I met her through a, a girl that used to be in our team and I am. She's now left, but I became really great friends with Michelle, right? Every single person in my circle who I call my best mates that I will literally go to fucking war for, I actually met online first through trading, right? And I think, I actually think it's, it's quite... Like you guys, you're going to outgrow your friends. Your identity is going to shift. You're going to have a lot more responsibility put on your shoulders, right? You're going to have to make a lot more sacrifices than, than you think you are or have to do now, right? You're going to have to handle a lot of projections from others, right? That's not your job to get reactive about if people have to say shit. Rock is a top educator in the company. Do you know how many times he's been backstabbed, talk shit about and yet look at the, he's like the most, he's as chill as a fucking cucumber. Like it, he doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't fucking phase him, right? You have to learn. This is why we started this, this course, uh, sorry, these site calls on building emotional intelligence. So you can build the emotional resilience to not only handle the shit show that the markets are going to throw at you sometimes, right? But also the shit show life is going to throw at you right? Your lifestyle is going to change. People are going to talk shit. They're going to say you, you've you changed and that's because you have, right? If people say you've changed, well, duh, that's the whole fucking point of growth, right? Like we got to also question, like, what do we actually expect on this journey, right? If you expect anything less than what we've just said, you know, a journey of trading free from fucking challenges, a life free from challenges, just because you're on the path to success or wanting better things and setting better standards. I think that's really naive of us, right? So it's, it's understanding and accepting that this journey that you're on includes outgrowing friendships. It includes you having a million identity deaths and, and evolving identities. It involves increased responsibilities, right? All these are the challenges. And when you go through those things, I truly believe that that is just a sign of maturity and realism in your approach to personal growth and your professional growth as a trader, right? On the other side of that, like Rock and I said, you're going to find your people, right? You will literally attract people who are cut from the same cloth, right? You'll find your tribe. But I want to ask you, if you're feeling lonely, Right. If you're in the limbo stage and you're in our discord, which in case you haven't noticed, it's extremely friendly and very chatty. I want you to consider how you're contributing to your loneliness when you could literally easily write in that discord and say, hey, guys, let's jump on a Zoom and, and catch up and meet each other and connect. You guys are free to do that. So if you're feeling some kind of way jump in discord and say, guys, I'm going through some shit. Is anyone free to get on zoom? People will jump on. 
that's what this <laughs> community is about, right? And you know that this community is not at all intimidating. Everyone is down to fucking rumble. <laughs> Everyone is down to rumble. So I have one last question. And then if anyone else has any questions, they can pop them in. But my question is around crypto. Hmm. Can we have a chat about that? Well, to be honest, I'm not that kind of like a big crypto guy comparing to Jordan, right? So, you know, when Jordan say jump, I just say how how high. You know what? Like... You have the exact same. What Jordan says, I just don't even question it. I'm like, whatever. Who text me? Buy this. I'm like, say no more, fam. Like, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. yeah, because, you know, and this is, and this is, uh, when you really find a network of individuals that are your ride and die, this is this is exactly when we cherish our strength. You know, it's like I know Jordan has a big network uh, of individuals that are having the crypto space, that are having the different ventures and all that, and they're always not always, but ninety percent of the time bringing <laughs> an amazing informations to Jordan, and of course, and you know. You know that when when it reach out to you, it's already filtered out and bulletproof to the point that it, you need to act fast, right? So because of that trust and mutual, let's say loyalty, I guess we cherish our own strength, and that's why I didn't let's say go dive deep into the crypto space to really go and you know research and try to find the next pop and all that. I just let Jordan be my filter is system i guess right but on the other side of course i provide different thing that jordan relies on me right and when i say jump jordan say how high you know what i mean so it's like that's that's a mutual benefit when you really find an outwork to move forward but yeah if i go to crypto space i think it's gonna pop again yeah yeah i agree like this is uh you would have noticed guys in in trade house how, like, say, Rock was describing his relationship with Jordan, that is very similar to how Jenna and I work, right? I've spent eight and a half years doing beginner calls, trade calls, all those things. That actually no longer lights me up, but it lights the fuck out of Jenna. She loves that. The season I'm in is about the wealth creation side. It's, all right, we've got all this money. Now where, Now what are we doing with it? Where are we putting it? all that type of stuff. Like you guys know, um, if you don't know, I'm studying financial planning so I can help you guys set up trust, help you with your tax, all that type of stuff. That's actually the season I'm in because that's actually what I'm interested in now. You know, when you do things for so long, you kind of just like, oh, it feels a bit like community service. And obviously you've got to do it for a period of time, but yeah, like you got to, when you, especially in business and just in general friendships, Rock, you're so right. You've got to play to each other's strengths like we don't need everyone doing beginner calls or charting calls right it doesn't make sense to do that so i love that you um yeah. brought to the conversation now guys do you have any other questions in the chat if i've missed them please pop them pop them in and i'm also reading the chat it's like you guys are so freaking lucky i cannot say more it's like imagine me starting like 10 years ago in 2014 where there was no community like you guys have there is no safe space to show vulnerability and maybe cry a little bit and somebody's going to give you the shoulder. You know what I mean? It's like, you guys are so freaking lucky. Yeah. Yeah. And this is just how, um, like, this is what I love about Trade House. You know, it's always been this. Our yeah. communities have always been a place for critical thinkers. Like, we we don't want to teach you what to think. Um, we want to teach you how to fucking think. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Right. We don't, the world doesn't need more followers. We need more people that can like create the resistance and stand, stand up when the world, you know, shits the bed again. We've all got our machetes out. Rock, have you seen my machete? I keep it here just for you. You have machete? Yeah. It only comes I mean, out. Considering the fact what I'm recently seeing, what you guys have in Australia, snake wise, spider wise, I think that's probably like a go to thing. Yeah. This is my machete. Jesus. And they <laughs> guys 2025 20, Sears is going to break out what's she going to do then hmm? it's going to be 2020 all over again but we're not going down that rabbit hole tonight <laughs> I think it's going to be sooner than that in my opinion though and on that then guys 
I need you to dedicate your fucking life to trading for the next six to 12 months. See what you can actually make of yourself with this skill set and you'll be very fucking surprised. Fast track your success by actually dedicating and committing to it. Commit to being a trader, right? Don't come into this with this, this little fucking hobby mindset. I'll do it when I can. Make time for it. Fucking dump some dead shits in your ass that are keeping you down and just, you know, do what Rose did. True. <laughs> it is true though. So funny. Rock, do you have any, what is your last piece of wisdom for tonight's call for every single person on this? <sighs> hmm. I mean, I already spit so many bars it's today. Bars tonight. <laughs> what okay i'll reframe this what is something you wish you heard from someone when you first started the magic of success in the work that is in the work that you're avoiding Oof. that's been a thing <laughs> that's been a thing that's awesome <laughs> that's one of the biggest quotes from that podcast that i'm uh listening to that it's like this is definitely the quote i'm gonna get yeah chris will that i'm gonna get a tattoo in my body for sure it's like this is so fucking true it's like the magic of success is in the work that you're avoiding mm. ah, like i have goosebumps right now because like think about it. it's like oh yeah and, and this is kind of like relapsing to the to the to the thing that we were saying it's like you know when you become your own boss can you work for yourself? Like really grind for yourself. Why can you go eight hours a day, five days a week to, to grind for somebody else and you're not able to grind four hours a day for yourself? Think about that. Yeah. Because it's too hard. What is too hard? Success is not going to come just because you say you're going to be your own boss. Mm. Right? And, and then again, if you really want to see who you want to become not really this is now nah, this is kind of like egoistic but um i don't know if you guys watch billionaires billions billions sorry yeah. billions i've billions. seen it, watch it though. you didn't watch it oh my Good. god that's your homework right now <laughs> permission for netflix okay <laughs> no it's hbo it's on the hbo max so yeah watch that cool all right guys so that's gonna be my crumbs for today and we're gonna see each other next thursday i think i think it's next thursday yeah yeah cool all right next thursday, yes, next thursday and yeah we can do whatever you want guys we can do this we can do charts i have a million more things i want to ask rock um actually i'm going to finish on this question sorry guys i'm going to hold you one okay. more second okay. your your training for how long of a ride 300 and something kilometers 312 kilometers and that's uh over 5000 vertical meters of climbing have you been able that. to extract any wisdom from this training that you can apply for success and just life like what it, what is that what is this ride and training actually teaching you so what is teaching me is how long i need to so for example training for something like that requires at least eight to six months preparation. And the interesting part is 70% of those trainings are zone two. What it means, it means low intensity, a little bit, let's say medium durations. So like your, let's say your heart, heartbeat up to 130. So nothing crazy, right? To develop a solid foundations. So again, that is realizing that kind of like the secret of everything is having a strong foundation, aka having the basics down. So like spending 70% of time teaching or training for the basics, and then the next 30% is that, let's say, power, that punch, right? Figuring your edge. So that can be related to the trading so easily. Spending 70% time of like learning the basics, implementing them having them under the skin and then having then special sauce in that 30 percent to have that edge right and over here with this cycling is exactly the same thing like I, i'm already five weeks deep 
and I need I didn't even have one training or one training sessions yet that I would had go all out or like to have like really crazy hardcore smashing you know roads and all that it's like grinding low intensity medium duration and consistency in it and that's just that's so interesting and it's so crazy how applicable is that to everywhere or everything around us guys extract what you want from that but i just learned a lot from that last little nugget rock thank you so much you are the goat you're the goat of the goats i'm going to give you that lord and you're the mama goat <laughs> <laughs> the mama goat you're hilarious well same time next thursday um we're gonna be back so rock's gonna be like i said next year way more involvement so this is not this is just a taste i appreciate yep. you so much have a nice everyone have a good night Peace.